This isn't going to be um, a, a longer, lengthy thing. I really want to reserve some time, Q&A for Brian and Dante. Um, but I really think it's important to just to get some face time with you guys on just a couple of things that have been changing uh, within the program. And some things are bigger than others, um, but, you know, we have the time to be face-to-face, -face and uh, I definitely wanted to do that. So one of the things I am going to mention unrelated to any of this is I'm seeing some people that we have not checked in for the meeting yet. So as we go out to lunch, as we go out to Vendor Row uh, from 2.30 to 4, Cut Go Events is going to be there. It would really help us out if you make sure that if you haven't checked in yet, please make sure to do so. All right, here we go. First thing I want to talk about is something that just launched on Tuesday. Uh, some friends caught it a little bit early. Um, it was going to be part of a media or a, an update here that we were going to do this week, uh, but it actually stood in the way of some other programming updates, so we launched it early. So uh, it's out there, and what we're calling it is it's the, the event marketing method, okay? And, and why we are doing this, it's an optional field that's in the event order entry in Rolo. But I think it's a key component uh, for you and your teams when looking at the success of your marketing efforts in an event. Uh, Amy just gave an incredible message uh, not too long ago about customer marketing. And it's right there on your event order entry on Rolo. So if you've had a specific targeted marketing campaign on that event, a text message, a postcard, an email, we want to help you keep track of that success rate. What are your customers responding to for that event? If you go then into your My Account and Orders, you're going to see a new column header where all of that information that you entered about that marketing method will be there for you. You can sort and you can download and you can see the success of your efforts. So it's a little bit of a plug. We truly believe in the efforts of the marketing and all of the vendors that are providing some great resources and what you guys are doing as well. So we wanted to do a little bit of a way to help that out here. The next thing I want to talk about is the Cutco event team going to be out there talking about event analytics, okay? Um, I've got a couple examples here, and uh, the names have been removed to protect the innocent because you guys are innocent. We're the ones that are guilty. These are some questions that we've get. Hello, is there a way that I could see how my team is doing so far in campaign three sales? We're having a team meeting. These numbers will really help as we push our mall season. Hey, wanted to see if Cutco has ever participated in any marathon ex expos the last two years. If so, can I get those sales stats? Thank you. So the issue here is that you guys have wasted your time in sending those emails to us because you didn't need to, because we didn't do a good job explaining to you guys what event analytics can really do, okay? Those are just a couple of examples that we get. Um, the questions just like that, plus so many more that you guys are asking that we have made of analytics, the ability that's out there to be able to help you as coordinators and assistants get that information. And, and how we've structured it, there are four separate layers of reporting. You're going to be able to look at personal sales, team sales, event sales summary, and item sold summary. And I want to take just a second here to explain what those different levels really mean, okay? The first is the event sales summary. Now this goes, and I think I have a little, yes I do, excellent, okay. So I have the ability here to now just you know, get LCD here. Uh, we have the ability as a, as a regional or divisional coordinator, you're going to be able to run results from completed events. Okay? You're going to be able to see all sorts of breakdowns from boost sales, free look sales, service call sales, totals and averages. All you're simply going to do, and you're going to see next week when we launch our update to this, is that everything is a just drop down window. You just simply put in what you're looking for from the period of time that you want to look at. Do you want to do any year to year or month to month comparison? Choose the division, choose the coordinator, choose the event type. If you're looking for a specific subtype, that's there as well. And then simply click data. What you get when you click on the actual order itself, or the actual event itself, as, at, as a coordinator or an assistant, you have access to see everything that took place at that event, okay? You have the ability to see all of the orders, the totals, the representatives that sold them, and breaking everything else down. How many of them were booth sales? How many of them were follow-up event service calls? And what were the orders and averages by representative for that event? One of the things that Ian Connor has been asking for a lot, and we're actually going to make it happen, is that he's asking for a breakdown with orders by date. It's helpful for him to be able to say, like, hey, you know what? I really want to see what our Saturday does. I really want to see what our averages are on Sunday. Um, so that's going to be an update that's going to take place probably by mid-March. We'll have that up and running. Just couldn't get that one in place uh, in time for the net, but that one's coming as well. The next section that is available 
is for team sales summary. Now this is really great for coordinators and assistants to keep track of your team sales. And you'll see here what we have is we have a comparison. You can compare what you're looking at. If you just want to see where they're at currently, you don't need to put in the second comparison, but if you ever want to see what they're looking at, how they're performing campaign by campaign, year to date, you can take their information and compare their 2019 versus their 2018 simply by putting in the calendar information. Again, you can go ahead and you can look at the type of event you want to look at and the subtype and the entire team information will pull up for you. Now what's really cool is that when you click on that team, oh, this is an example, so this is how we would answer that email. Is there a way I could see how my team is doing so far in campaign three sales? These numbers would really help push. This is exactly well how we would do that. But when you click on that representative's name, then what happens is, is that you can see their individual performance. If I'm Ian Connors and I click on Ben Howard, I can see all of Ben Howard's events, all of their sales, and everything that they're being able to do. Then I can even go in there and I can take a look at his individual orders again. So just like we did it for the entire event, we can look at everything that Ben Howard's doing, help him, train him, see what's taking place. How is he doing with his service calls? How is he doing with his follow-up? How is he doing with his averages as well? The third section is what we call the event item sold summary. Now why this is important is because we want them, you guys to have the ability to analyze the types of events that we do. We constantly get the question, you saw the example of the email, have we ever done blank event before? I see it on GroupMe, I see it in text, we get emails, we get calls. We're happy to answer those and you guys are great about responding to the team as well with your own examples and your own uh, personal experience, but this information is available as well because what you can do is you can go ahead and you can grab the event subtype that you're looking for. We have 43 different subtypes of events. Some of them are broken down very minutely and some of them are a little bit more general, but we can go ahead and we can break it down to 43 different event types that you're looking for. This can be very helpful when you're trying to decide about looking up an event or looking at the past sales history from somebody else. So for an example, this is the example I like to use, you know, hey, we're looking at car shows. How successful are car shows? So here's a listing of all the car shows. Holy crap, the Barrett Jackson car auction did $64,000. How is that possible? So we go ahead and we can click in there and you're going to be able to see what is exactly selling at the Barrick Jackson Car Show. This will help you with your marketing plans. This will help you with your booth displays. Understanding maybe there are some items that sell a little bit more than others at particular types of events. And lastly, we have the item sold summary. And this is very helpful, I think, specifically when we're developing marketing plans, promo our product orders, specials, uh, and so much more. Because this is exactly giving you an updated look 24-7 of what our event program is selling. Are there particular sets? Are there particular items? What is exactly taking place? And we give you a breakdown of all the different types of items that we have, of all the SKUs that are available, you can see, you can choose whether it's by small display, whatever type, if you want to get a sense of how the Northeast region is selling table knives, we can even break that down for you as well. We think that's very helpful, especially as you guys are going ahead and highlighting and seeing what exactly you want to do, especially in mall season, to be able to go ahead and play with your marketing, uh, your promo orders to make sure you have the right combination on hand. Again, I kind of touched upon some of that quickly because the Cutco event team is going to be out in vendor row and you're going to be able to see the incarnation of the new version of this out there uh, as soon as we have uh, lunch and break this afternoon. So make sure you take some time, sit with them, let them show you what's taking place. But guys, this is a huge component, uh, as I mentioned last night. Uh, we're going to have some training videos, we're going to have some walkthroughs. The Cutco event team has some great handouts to give to your teams, to give to everybody to understand exactly how to navigate through here, because I think that combined with what we're else we're launching in terms of team set styles, goals, and so much more, this is a huge way to be able to help you hit what you want to do in 2019. We are launching next week to help out coordinators and assistants with their team, a brand new team management option. Right now with the changes that we've made for DocuSign and the electronic agreements and assurance, when somebody needs to be added to the team or any changes need to be made, you need to come to us. We're not gonna have to have you do that too much longer. 
There will be a team management section inside your dashboard. You'll click add team member. And if you can see right here, you're going to see a little document icon, okay? So you'll have the ability to click add a member. When you do so, you'll be able to put in that representative number. They will populate and you'll see icons show. The very first icon that shows is gray. So when I, if I add Brandon Chow to my team, I can go ahead and I click that gray agreement I've had, uh, our pad, it will automatically send all of the agreements out through DocuSign from you to him so everything will be set. You don't need to have us do that anymore. When you see that the, if you're in coordinator management or if you're in team management and you see that a yellow agreement pad is there, then you can see that an agreement has been sent out but it hasn't been signed yet. So for any particular reason, if you need to void that or resend it, simply click that and it will go ahead and do that. And lastly, if you see a green check mark next to that person's name on your team, that rep is good to go for your team. We know that they're all set, that so you can go ahead and assign shifts, you can assign recaps, and so much more. Which leads me to my next point, please clean your team, okay? So starting next week, you'll have the ability to see exactly what's taking place here. You're going to see right here what's taking place. If you don't see anything other than completed, and an agreement updated date next to that representative's name, they will not be active on your team. So if you've got people that are voided, if you've got people that are no longer there, you will have the option to remove them and you'll only have the active most uh, team on your, uh, available to you. This is especially helpful as you're going ahead and trying to do recaps, as you're trying to do shift selections uh, with that new program. You're not sorting through dead reps or representatives that are no longer there. We're trying to help you guys out and, and minimize the amount of time you're spending in there, but it really starts by making sure that you have the exact team uh, set up correctly to do so. So we have some team management updates for you guys as well that's launching next week. I wanna make sure that we understand what it means to be an assistant. So if I'm a coordinator and I'm assigning an assistant, I wanna make sure that everybody understands that assistance right now gives the same level as access and authority as you carry as the coordinator, okay? This means that it's all or nothing for privileges. Recap submission, booking requests, adding team members, they will all have the same ability to do what you can do currently within CutGo events, okay? But so we're working to make uh, the ability to allow for roles within the assistants where I can assign an assistant but only give them booking privileges. Or I can make someone an assistant but they're in charge of my recaps or whatever the case may be. But until we get to that point, I just want to make it clear with everybody that when, we have, when you're in assigning an assistant, they have the exact same level as authority as you. Adding an assistant is very easy. When you're ready to make that decision and you're all set, simply click the check mark next to them and then everything will go through the system to be able to go ahead and update them and they will now have the same privilege as you guys as well. We made some changes this year. We started last year with an official event team agreement and this year we did it all through automation. Um, and we realize that what we do with that is that we, every single year, I'm gonna come back to you guys in November and ask for your updated divisional policies. Any changes that need to be made because we're gonna follow the same process as we did this year that in December, at one time in December, probably the first Tuesday in December will be the date, we will go ahead and send out all of the upcoming year 2020 agreements. So at that point, we will go ahead and send out what we have as your current divisional policy on hand. Throughout the month of November, I will send some emails asking for any updates that you have. I also recognize that what the agreement is out there right now, we will, you know, may not need to, it may not be the same one, okay? That there might need some changes. So understanding that, we built the system to respond and, and allow for that. When, if you guys are making a change mid-year to any of the current agreement for your divisional policy that's out there, send it to us, we will load the, poli the change policy agreement and we'll send and we're able to do that in full to your entire team. Please understand though that it will void out all of the existing documents and everybody will need to resign to be reactivated with the current updated policy. It doesn't take long, it's just another step to be able to do. It happens and we get it and we know that there's things that happen throughout the year that people realize, hey, we didn't account for that. We wanna make sure that we're doing this now differently. And if it needs to happen immediately within the year, we get it. But we recommend making changes at the end of the current year for the following year during our call for changes in November and December. 
We have also begun this year the, pro, the ability to go ahead and get everybody assigned on an insurance program. We have different tiers, one for coordinators and one for event team members. It is a requirement that if you are in the event program with a signed active agreement that you carry an insurance policy. There is only one charge for insurance per year assigned, and that is no matter how many teams that you are a coordinator or an event team member of. What's the difference between a team member insurance and what's the difference between the coordinator insurance? Obviously, there's a cost, but in our eyes, if you are listed as the coordinator of that event, you will need coordinator insurance for the entire year. So some people may be a team member um, be on their teams, but they go ahead and they do some service and sales events, and they're a coordinator for those because they're the only person and everything is set up for them. They would need the coordinator insurance. If you're in the federal program, and even though you're a team member, uh, you're not a coordinator for the traditional program, but you're on the federal program, you need the coordinator insurance. We go ahead and we check and verify that no matter how many teams that you're on and whether you should be a coordinator or a team member insurance, that you haven't been charged two or three times and making sure you're only charged once, but every time a new team member is added, we will go ahead and check for this. If they are already on the program as an event team member or they are carrying coordinator insurance, they're already good to go. If not, then we will go ahead and we will sign them up and they will be charged one time for the $75 fee per year if they are listed as a brand new team member. It's $75 no matter whether they sign up in January, whether they sign up in April, whether they sign up on December 30th, and then the following year is uh, for 2020. It is $75 for the entire year for the event team insurance policy. That will take place every single year moving forward. We need to make sure that we're protecting the program, protecting your investments with product and display, having the coverage that is becoming more uh, prevalent and uh, scrutinized, I would say, by promoters that are, are being more uh, proactive and taking a look to see what's taking place. We're finding even increases with um, not only are we needing the coordinator to be insured, but they also want every single person that will be behind the booth and at that venue for the duration of the event to be insured. That led to why we are doing this. So we think we've come up with a pretty cost-effective solution. Um, we get that it is an additional charge, but we also understand that that $75 for a team member covers not just behind the booth, it covers you on your service calls, demos, any cut-go activity that you are doing, uh, you carry that same coverage with you. So I think it's a pretty good deal when you break it down that way. And the last thing I want to talk about before turning it over to uh, Dante and, and Brian is the dashboard and the green check mark. Guys, when we developed this particular feature, uh, we worked with leading doctors and physicians because this icon will save your life. Less stress, <laughs> it will lower your blood pressure because here's what, here's what this icon represents. When we get a booking confirmation from a promoter, it means that we have provided all of the information that is required to the promoter, the contract and the payment. And I promise you, I don't have an example of it here, but I swear to you, Scout's Honor, that every confirmation that we send to the promoter by phone, by email, or a handwritten letter, any particular way that we provide payment, we ask them to confirm receipt to make sure that we have it, that they have it. Because when they do that, we go into the system and we notate. And if it's an email or if there's any type of tangible document that is included, we put that onto the event, um, uh, the, the event file as well for you so you can see that. So you can see that the promoter has confirmed that they have received our payment and everything is good to go. We specifically put this event alert in your dashboard. And now it went with event team schedules. That alert will also be on every team member's schedule as well. So when they're looking at their shift, they're going to be able to see if there's a green check mark or not. We are asking just to help you guys out, and again, this is uh, FDA approved right here, to make <laughs> sure that you guys are checking that, that check mark. If you do not see a check mark from an upcoming event that is booked in the system, it means that we have done everything that we've could. We've sent our info, but even when we're asking the promoter to respond back to us, we simply haven't heard back yet. Probably a great idea for a team member or an assistant to take it upon themselves as they're preparing for the week. The majority of the events are a couple days ahead of time. We always put the events out there at least 10 days ahead of time. So you're able to see in your pre-event planning, make it part of your pre-event planning work. If you do not see a green check, check mark, make sure that you're following up with the promoter to make sure that when I show up on site, 
or when my team member shows up on site, they know that Cutco is going to be there. It'll save you guys the, those texts and, and the anxiety of uh, you know, making sure that you're all set to go, frantic calls um, to us or, or to even amongst yourselves. You can save yourself sleeping a little bit on Saturday. You're not getting that 6 a.m. Uh, frantic text or call from a team member that says, they don't have cut go. So that's why that is there. So we uh, wanted to make sure that we spent a couple seconds on that. I, I really just want to, again, just take the opportunity here before I turn it back over to uh, Dante and, and Brian and just sincerely thank all of you guys so much for an incredible meeting, but uh, for an incredible 2018. Your leadership, your passion, your dedication, it drives us. It drives us to do what we're doing here on the administrative side. It has driven the company to change their thinking and put insurance programs in place at a very cost-effective rate to be able to make sure that we're protecting what this program has done. We absolutely will get to 40 million. We, I will absolutely have a tattoo. We absolutely will continue to grow this program more and more, but it becomes from meetings like this, it becomes from the feedback that you guys are providing, and it just comes from continuing to work together. So I just want to take a couple minutes, share with you guys some things that are going to be launching next week. The Cutco event team is going to be out in vendor row. Make sure you stop by and see them. Keep the ideas coming, keep the suggestions coming. Let us know how we can continue to serve you because we're not here if you guys aren't out there doing it as well, okay? So thanks, guys.